Gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome onto the stage your MC, Tori Griffiths. Tonight, my parents have actually come out tonight. My mum and dad are here. Yeah, my, my dad growing up, I feel like he was a very iconic, the Aussie, just the standard Aussie dad. He, they were at home growing up, mum was always the disciplinary. She kept things straight and in line and organised. Dad never really got involved in punishments, but when he did, they were to the max. I remember he got me with the best punishment I've ever had in my whole life. I still remember it to this day. He stung me hard. Uh, I was 14 years old and he found the Google search history. <laughs> Yeah, and I remember I walked into the room and he's sitting at the computer and he turns up and he goes, what's this? And I was like, you know what that is. But he, the, the ultimate punishment was that he printed off the list and that I had to take it and go and read it to mum. No 14 year old wants to go and tell their mum all the things they type while their dick is hard. Definitely no 14 year old wants to say the word fisting to their mum. Oh shit, but dad teed off this, he, fit, he tied off the whole punishment so well. I was nervous, I was rattled, I just read out this list to mum. He snatched the paper off me and he goes, thanks mate, we'll use this for inspiration tonight. <laughs> I've had a clean browser history ever since. <laughs> like, I'll search my nearest Nando's and then delete that shit. <laughs> just in case dad finds it and decides to like stuff mum like a chicken. So, <laughs> Speaking of porn though, actually, I found out something wild the other day. Do you guys know there are guys out there that will share porn with each other? Do you guys think there are guys that will be like, this made my willy a bit hard, how about you? That's a weird vibe. Like, I've never been mid-wank and thought, oh, Daryl will love this. <laughs> like, what are you going to do, send him a picture of the pile of dirty tissues? I'll be like, beat that, cunt. Uh, oh, I found out something else crazy as well, actually. I found out the other day. Do you guys know in America now, they've got 24-7 daycares? Got 24 7 daycares. For those who want to do zero parenting all the time. <laughs> Could you imagine dropping your kid off at daycare and then being like, when do you want to pick him up? Be like, when he's fucking 18. <laughs> you can pay this shit off like a hex debt. <laughs> For me though, 24 7 daycare, that just sounds like having a really expensive World Vision kid. You know, and actually, actually so speaking of World Vision kids, uh, my parents, they just recently got a letter. Uh, they got a letter from one of their previous World Vision kids and um, she's let them know that she's become a doctor, which, which is amazing and everything, but it now means my parents' World Vision kid is their most successful child. <laughs> yeah, 30 bucks a month, they got a doctor. <laughs> what a bitch. <laughs> I remember growing up, she'd send over her report cards and they'd arrive and she would just be getting straight A's. Mum and dad would compare it to mine and my report card was just fucked. Uh, and one time I got so jealous of her that I put her photo in the fridge so she could see how much food we had. <laughs> oh, we fucking amped to get this shot. My mum and dad are here and I just talked about them fucking. Are we fucking excited? Oh, there we go. This first act is amazing. Bang your hands together. Come on, bring it up. For Michael Schaefer! Is that too much for five o'clock? Is that too much, Beth? <laughs> we're not nice to our animals either in Australia, because when there's a shark attack, we go out and kill the shark. What for? The sharks aren't learning. <laughs> They're not, his friends aren't like, where's Larry? They're not fucking putting it together. There was a shark attack in South Australia, right? And uh, afterwards, these blokes go out, they go out and they kill the shark. And uh, afterwards, they interview the leader on the news and they go, why'd you kill the shark? And the leader goes, justice. <laughs> That's not justice. If you want justice, you've got to put the shark on trial. <laughs> Let him be judged by a jury of its peers. <laughs> and I reckon 12 sharks in that jury, he's going to get off. That's what I think. <laughs> At least someone's trying to fucking get justice. There's so much injustice in the world, you know? We can get justice for the server when he gets attacked. But when an indigenous kid gets killed by a cop, everyone's like, we don't know what to do now. Can't get the justice now. Too hard to do justice. I reckon we've got to start sending the shark guys after the crooked cops. They'll get justice straight away. <laughs> Mate, you've got to get justice for this kid in Darwin. Was it a great white? He was white. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that joke, people who laughed. <laughs> Obviously got a few no voters in the room and that's okay, that's fine. Oh, he's come to WA where you all fucking voted. No, here he is, get fucking into it. Look, I don't know, I don't know. 
my grandmother, she was like crazy racist, my grandmother. She was uh, in an aged care facility and all the guys who looked after her were lovely Indian guys. They took great care of her. And her favourite thing to do when they bring her the food, every time she would go, Oh, is it curry again? <laughs> I was always so embarrassed. I'd pull the guy aside and be like, Hey, sorry about my grandmother. If you want to poison her, it's fine, okay? <laughs> I think aged care facilities are a crazy experiment we're doing in our society. What we're doing right now is we're getting our oldest generation, who I think we can agree are the most racist of the generations. We're waiting for them to get as old and racist as possible to the point where they can't control the words coming out of their mouths. And then we put them in a facility staffed entirely by immigrants. And then we wonder why they keep getting beaten up. Because as we say in Australia, you talk shit, you get hit, okay? That's how it fucking works. By the way, this is risky material to do at a fucking 5 p.m. show when all the fucking old people are here, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm still gonna fucking do it. I can see all these fucking guys go, we will we'll have the fucking aged care facility this afternoon. This is our last fucking day on earth. Let's go to some comedy. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> fucking hell. No, I mean, my grandma, she had a friend, Maura, she was even worse. So they would bring Maura the food. Every time they brought her the food, she would do the Indian head wobble to them. It's terrible. They bring her the food, she'd go, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm like, fuck, Maura, you can't do that. You've got to stop. Turns out she just had Parkinson's. So I look, we... <laughs> we all make mistakes. Bring it back up with Samuel Gabrisselassi. Yeah, my name is Samuel. I remember I told this lady that my name was Samuel, right? And she goes, oh, Samuel, that must be a white name. What's your African name? And I'm like, well, if you must know, Karen. <laughs> my African name is actually Sam. Yo. It was actually Michael Schaefer's grandmother that said that. <laughs> Lovely lady. Well, my name is uh, Samuel Gerisalasi. Gerisalasi is an Ethiopian name. It means servant of the Holy Trinity. And Samuel means you'll probably be able to get a job now. <laughs> and I do have a job, thank you. Yeah, when I'm not doing this, I actually work as a physiotherapist. Yeah, please don't come and see me, ma'am. <laughs> For those who don't know what a physio is, by the way, a physio is the person you see after the Cairo has manipulated all the money out of your wallets. <laughs> so go see physios. <laughs> I, love, I work in this private clinic. Uh, I love having this name where I work because it's me, Samuel, and the other guy's name is Mustafa which is great because I get all the clients. <laughs> People will call up and be like, hey, I'd like an appointment for Tuesday. And the receptionist will be like, who would you like an appointment with? Sam or Mustafa? <laughs> and nine out of 10 times, I'll say Sam. But they're not expecting this. I know they're not expecting this because once I got this new patient and I went to the waiting area and I was like, is Mr. John Smith here? Mr. John Smith? And the guy whose name is John Smith looked at me and then he looked around the room hoping there's another John Smith in the room. <laughs> then he got up and he came up to me and he goes, I thought I was seeing Sam. I'm like, sorry sir, Sam's away, I'm Mustafa. <laughs> Come this way, we're gonna try dry needling today. <laughs> and he's like, but you don't even know what's wrong with me. And I'm like, I think I do. <laughs> Let's release that ignorance. <laughs> what are you keeping in your gluteus maximus? Because you're an asshole. <laughs> I sometimes see Mustafa's patients when he's away and they always get his name wrong. The best one I had was this patient that came in and he goes, I used to see the other physio. And I was like, yeah? And he goes, yeah. His name is from the Lion King. <laughs> I'm like, that's Mufasa. <laughs> that's Simba's dad. 
He's a lion, not a fizz here. I'm going to have to refer you to a neurologist. I can't fix stupid. Bring it up, the back showwood. I also got parents. Anyone else? Big orphan crowd in tonight. No good. Okay, Ooh, I guess we'll just try imagine. Um, uh, you know, I got parents, they're weirdos. Uh, my mum is a true crime author. My dad is a homicide detective. Yeah, which makes me mentally ill. Um, <laughs> and them divorced. Damn, hardcore. Well, don't be sad for them. It's, it's, I find it very interesting when people get very sad about the divorce part. They're fine. They've moved on with people. They're very, very happy with their new lives. Me? Still, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the freaking head. Don't worry, though. I've got medication now. Fuck yes. Everyone give it up for medication. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so wonderful. If you are thinking about it, invest. It is the best decision I've ever made in myself. Uh, and I will be selling it as merch in the break. Um, <laughs> Parents are remarried. Uh, it means I've got step parents. Anyone else got step parents? Oh. Hey, oh, you're, of course you're all orphans. What am I talking about? It's, it's cruel of me to say that. You're right. So you have really married parents' vibes, and yeah, absolutely. For the shoulders back, believing in yourself, <laughs> correcting the comedian on stage. My parents love each other. Shut up. Um, <laughs> That's cool, that's all right. Step-parents are pretty well known. I mean, I'm, I'm coming around to step-parents. I didn't really like mine when I first met them, but you know, as I'm growing and maturing, I'm learning to respect them. And not just for the groundbreaking work that step-parents are doing in the porn industry. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it up, guys. <laughs> I know, but my stepmom, uh, I was very, very cruel to her uh, when she first came on the scene. All right, I was 16 years old, and uh, she, she just really wanted to build a bridge between us, and I just like, wasn't having a bar of it. I mean, first of all, lady, you're choosing to fuck my dad. <laughs> Have some self-respect. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, it all came to it. She'd been trying for months and months and months like, to break through to me. It all came to a head one day, all right, when I was in my uh, bedroom one evening doing busy teenage girl things. Not joking off, calm down, that's not where that story's going. Uh, probably just writing in fake emails to Dolly Doctor. Yeah? <laughs> Anyone else have that pastime? No? A lot of you, so wait, who here doesn't know what Dolly Doctor is? Oh, a lot of you. Okay, okay, let me explain. This is very, very important. So, uh, in the early 2000s, there was a magazine uh, called Dolly Magazine, and it was for teenage girls, right? And of course, they had your standard, like, you know, shoes and celebrity gossip and fashion and blah, blah, blah. No one gave a fuck about any of that. All that we cared about was this sealed off section in the middle called Dolly Doctor. Yeah, and you had to tear it open because it was El Scandalo, okay? <laughs> because inside the mayor, inside there, what you could do as a child is send in any question you had anonymously through the website. This is before Google and knowing how to delete history and everything, right? Uh, you could send in any question you had anonymously and someone in the magazine had to answer it. Which meant that me and every other virgin in Australia <laughs> spent all of our spare time sending in a bunch of sexual nonsense, <laughs> right? And then you get it back at the end of the month, tear it open, right? And traumatise each other with the lies that you had written. Oh my God, it was perfection. Some of my best writing work to this day. <laughs> Dear Dolly Doctor, my friend had sex in a garden and a worm got in her pussy. <laughs> Could she be pregnant? <laughs> Dear Dolly Doctor, my boyfriend's cum tastes a little fruity. <laughs> Does that mean he's gay? <laughs> so fun. Oh my God, the hours I spent just making up bullshit. Anyway, so I was in my room penning my essays, right? Setting the scene. Uh, and Wendy, my stepmom, comes and uh, she knocks on the door. She peeks her head in and she goes, Hi, Beck. I'm so sorry to interrupt. I know that you're very busy. Um, but I know that The Bachelor is on tonight and I know that you really like The Bachelor. So I went and I got some chocolate and some chips and some dips and I've put them out in the living room for you. And if you would like me to join you, I would love that. But also, if you just want to watch that, that on your own, that is your space, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so sweet, yeah. And I said, fuck up, Wendy! She was still there the next day. 
Worst way to find out your dad's a great root. Um, <laughs> Make some noise, bring your noise up for Corey White. Good evening, I hope you're all right. Just kidding, that's not my accent. Uh, <laughs> It'd be a fucking long night if that was my accent, wouldn't it, hey? Right, so my name's Corey, you have to excuse his haircut. I am uh, currently halfway through transitioning into a lower tax bracket. So I, uh, <laughs> trying to speak my truth and live my authentic true self, and uh, no, no, I'm a victim. Anyway, uh, <laughs> fuck. So you guys been watching the World Cup? Sorry, the war? <laughs> Glenn Maxwell's killed 200 Palos. Fucking beautiful. I, uh, I don't know. Who's team Palestine? <laughs> Islamophobia. Hard in the room tonight. I, uh, I take it we're all pro-Israel then. <laughs> no, we're Australians. We're fucking ambivalent, aren't we? Uh, yeah, the war in the Middle East. Fucking what's new? Uh, I don't know. People ask me, you know, Corey, what's your opinion? I don't like to volunteer my opinion, you know, because it's such a divisive and polarising subject. But let me say this. Since the war broke out, my Uber rating has skyrocketed. <laughs> it's really gone through the roof, and uh, it's a bit like an Israeli airstrike on a hospital in that regard, but uh, uh, I don't create the truth. Anyway. It's been a big week. You guys have a punt on the Melbourne Cup Tuesday? Yeah, the race that stops the nation, or as the Palestinians call it, Israel. So. Uh, <laughs> I told that joke to a Kiwi mate of mine who's Jewish and he said to me, Corey, in New Zealand, Jews have their own language they speak called Hebrew. <laughs> uh, I fucking hate that that gets a better laugh than the first guy, I'll be honest. She says more about you than me. <sighs> Fuck, it's a strange time to be alive though, isn't it, guys? Doesn't it feel like we're living in a South Park episode? No, shit, how do you make sense of this reality anymore? Like, I saw this news story the other day, right? The Israeli intelligence service, the Mossad, foiled a gas attack in Germany. I was like, well, better late than never, I guess. Uh, right? And then at the beginning of the year, I remember I saw this news story, right? That Donald announced that he was running for presidency again in 2024 at this big party out at Mar-a-Lago. And who was in the room? Western Australia's finest, Gina Reinhart. Because right? if there's one woman who could sit in a room with a Donald and be completely confident that he wouldn't grab her by the pussy. <laughs> That'd be like grabbing a piece of steak, wouldn't it? It's like, oh, fucking hell, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Over in Western Australia, we call that a Christian porterhouse, don't we? <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Would you believe I was at an event last night and I was having a beer with Christian Porter and I told him that joke. So, <laughs> meet your fucking heroes, so though, say. So, uh, <sighs> What's happened to the gay community? Strange segue, Corey. Remember when they were cool? You know? It's like, it, you can trace the decline of all cultures through their art, right? And in my lifetime, the gays have gone from Freddie Mercury to Sam Smith. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, that is a fucking fall from grace, you know what I mean? They have this king of 80s power ballads to this chubby satanic fucking moron in stockings. You know what I mean? It's like, and you know, it's like Anzac Day, Nidoc Week, and Pride Month. It's like, I could give you guys a month of celebrations if you were churning out Freddie Mercury's on the reg, but I mean, at least Alan Joyce's of the world can go fucked, you know what I mean? All I'm saying is the gays aren't carrying their weight, but they're fucking certainly putting it on. And, uh... <laughs> fucking inflation's hitting them bad, you know what I mean? And all right, we got one last act. Bring it up for Sandeep Kamani! There's a lot of positives getting the citizenship, but not everything's been a positive. There's been some negatives as well. Like, now that I'm an Australian citizen, my family back in India, they want me to apply for a family visa for them to come and visit me. Over here, and I was like... Why the fuck would I do that? <laughs> I was like, I mean, you guys are the reason I left in the first place. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> 
<laughs> they've been really pushy right like especially mom mom's been way very pushy about that shit and i was like mom don't worry you're getting older i don't want you to travel uh, like you know take three flights 24 hours journey i'll come visit you don't worry and i went to visit my family back in india recently and that's when i realized that now that i'm an australian citizen i have to apply for a fucking visa to go to india <laughs> I was in the line, right, immigration line, the, I get to the counter, the guy looks at my Australian passport, he looks at me and he goes, sir, I need to see some papers, I need to see your visa. I was like, this is visa, motherfucker. <laughs> what are you talking about, Sanjay? Like, you know, just let me in, bro. We know each other by first name basis, man. Like, we were talking three days ago over the phone, you were trying to upgrade my Telstra plan. But, What has changed? <laughs> I can do that joke now because I'm Australian, guys. <laughs> Uh, like, it was good, like, he, uh, Sanjay was really helpful, he was like, you can go online, it's visa on arrival, just fill out a couple of forms, you'll be out of here in like 10 minutes. So it took me 10 or 15 minutes, I got out of the airport, I ordered an Uber to go home from the airport, from New De in, De in New Delhi, right? And uh, I got picked up by this white dude driving an Uber in India. <laughs> uh, I don't think half of you got that joke. Uh, <laughs> So I ordered an Uber in India and I got picked up by this white dude. <laughs> I was so fucking confused at the time. I was like, am I in the matrix? What the fuck is happening, man? Like, you know, I was holding my head, like, you know. The guy's name was Dave. I was like, not even David, like Dave. Like, I was like, how fucking stereotypical can this get? Uh, <laughs> I was like, I was so fucking, like, you know, I was not in the right mindset when I saw that. Like, you know, I was like, do you have papers? Can I see your visa? Like, what, what the fuck's happening? They are like, why are we in this situation? <laughs> And Dave was really nice about it, like he was like, I get that man, like I get your reaction, I get that all the time in India, but life of an immigrant is not easy. <laughs> I was like, Dave, uh, have the drugs just kicked in? Like, what, what, what has happened now? <laughs> but he was like, like you know, he, 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 he told me his story, he was like, I came to India because I fell in, this, in love with this girl who, was, who is Indian, and I moved over here to be with her. We were two beautiful kids. I was like, that's great, man. But why are you driving Ubers? He's like, I will, you used to be a doctor in my country. <laughs> I was like, is this me in a parallel universe? Like, what the fuck is that? So he was like, no. I was like, what the fuck are you doing driving Ubers, man? Like, you could have just walked into Uber India's office and they would have made you the CEO. Like, come on. I thought that's how it worked for white people. You just rock up, you're like, this is ours now. <laughs> we own this bitch. Uh. Oh, we've made it. Thanks so much, everyone, for coming out. We really appreciate you. We have all everything on social media. My name's Tori Griffiths. Thanks, Legends. Have a good one.